good afternoon from Mangalia here in Romania, which is actually Vlad's hometown. And if you haven't been watching our videos, we are on another road trip. This is series two of our Romanian road trip with Vlad and Georgiana from Romanian Thrills. And they have taken us to his hometown. And actually in his hometown is the oldest mosque in Romania. It was built back in the 1500s and there is so much history attached to it. The meaning of the name Esmahan, which is the name of this mosque, is the granddaughter of the Sultan, who was one of the most important people in the Ottoman Empire. So I think we're going to be seeing so much of the history here today. This is definitely a different type of video, but it's a story that we wanted to tell. The Broja, the region that we're in, is definitely a melting pot of different communities. Um, back in the Ottoman Empire, this is one of the only territories of Romania or parts of Romania that they occupied, and therefore it's the area that has still today the highest population of Muslims in Romania. And it has a lot of different people from different backgrounds. It has Greeks, of course, it has Romanians, but they all live together in one. You have the mosque here, and just around the corner, you'll have a huge great church and apparently they get on better than anyone there's never any issues this is like one of the only places you'll find in the world they're at peace they've lived together for years they accept each other they share the area together and outside it's got really beautiful grounds so the tombstones you've seen behind me they actually date back almost 300 years we are just taking a quick walk around the grounds because it's obviously a smaller mosque um, so we're just taking a walk around the grounds which is super beautiful but actually Mangalia is known as being an ancient Greek town and its name used to be Kalatis. There was actually a citadel in Kalatis, Kalatis citadel and it was sort of not used, it was abandoned I suppose you could say. So the rocks from this citadel were actually used to build this mosque which is crazy if you think that like these rocks here were once a citadel like just think about how many years old that is like it's crazy we've actually been lucky enough to gain access to go in here today which is why we wanted to make this video and we actually have someone from the local uh, community to show us much. around he can't speak english but of course it can be translated by vlad and georgiana so we can find out more about this place and obviously before you go in, what's it called? A robe. A robe. I have to wear a robe to cover my arms. Are you going to have to cover the hair legs? as well? Or? Do we have to cover the hair too? We are. Oh. It looks I'm nice. loving the matching colours here. Right. You picked and you've a good got all like, the pictures from around Turkey, so oh, Istanbul wow. and everything like that. That's amazing. You look good. Thank you. We are heading in now. I have had to be head covered to toe covered and I actually really like this. I it's love really cool. The, it's different, right? It's not like yeah. a, a hijab or anything like that. It's, it's, it's actually different. really pretty and I love the meaning of behind it. Obviously uh -huh. having Istanbul on it, but we can go in, we have to take our shoes off, put them to the left hand side. Fastest, oh. fastest string oh. is only if you're a Muslim. Oh, so we have to do this side. Yeah, so if you're a visitor of the mosque, you only have to keep to this and side. Fastest, only if you're a Muslim. And part of this is female. Right, so over on this side, on top of me, it's a place reserved only for the women that can see the prayer, but they cannot be seen. It's actually really nice inside. It's pretty simple. And again, you can see the rock that it was made with. And of course, you can't cross here. This can only cross here if you're Muslim, but it will show at the front that it's facing Mecca. And he's actually demonstrated how they would pray and obviously always pray towards Mecca. And the lines, those are COVID lines. Oh, yeah. yeah well, it's like not, it's not a spot to pray, it's just like yeah, where to pray, pray during COVID. You can pray everywhere on the rug, but this was just put in for so COVID. So COVID, COVID even COVID affects rules. religion. Yeah. They're actually kind enough to let us go up the minaret, up the tower. It's so cool, thank you. Oh, it's a small door. I didn't expect this. Look at this tiny door. So now, because we've actually left, we can put our shoes mosque, back on. We can actually put our shoes back on and go up wow. the minaret. I've never been up a minaret before. This is. Look at the old rock. Uh huh, and this would be the rock that was used to make it like wow. 500 years ago. It is a really oh, tight squeeze to get up here. It's uh, It didn't seem so big from outside, but walking up here. This is pretty surreal. I never thought that I would be up 
a minaret. This is where all the speakers are when the call for prayer gets put out. Hopefully it doesn't now because my ears they will go. Would this break. is the first time ever. That I can't believe the access they've given us. Yeah. Like like we said, everyone lives here in harmony from all different backgrounds it's and amazing. the hospitality that has been shown for us to be able to come up here. It's is beautiful. Amazing. It is right. We're up a minaret and the views we can almost we're near the coast we can almost see the sea i just absolutely love the fact that we've been walking up this minaret and it is made from the oldest stone ever it's so narrow you're i'm surprised we've made it up here with those i was steps. struggling with my bag on i was really struggling if you're claustrophobic would not downstairs. recommend and also i wouldn't recommend if you've been in romania eating a lot of mitch and papanash it's definitely not the way to get up here Thank you. Miss and Miss. Ben de Tashekulade. From the mosque, we have walked to a Tartar restaurant. It's type of a culture. Um, they have all sorts of different things. It's kind of like a street food hole in the wall section. Um, and there's some crazy things that I have never seen and never ever heard of. And it just looks really, really cool. It's right by the marina. And people can just pick up coffee. snacks. Yeah, they have sand coffee. Like, what is that? But you can pick up snacks from the little hole here and take it to the beach. Or as we are, we're just going to sit in and have a couple of snacks. And again, it shows they have just a hole in the wall there. So people from all cultures that go to the beach someday oh, yeah. can come and try Oh, you some can all foods. sit down together. Like we have it um, here in this cafe, done in a proper traditional manner. So sand that's coffee. How sand coffee. It? Yeah, I mean it's heated up by the by the sand. The coffee gets heated up by the sand. Traditionally, uh, they used the sand and the fact that it's a re really good heat conductor because they couldn't really light a fire. So that's what they used to make their coffee. So if you're walking by here, it actually has a hole in the wall where you can buy your shaberic and you can actually, look, you can see straight through and you can see the ladies making it and they're making me attempt, attempt to make one. I don't know how good it be, so you're going to get some of the cheese. I'm going to chuck the cheese in here. Like this, this is enough. And then spread. On top, yeah, just like she did. Perfect. Now use your fingers to seal it. Well done. Well done. So now I'm getting there, so I'll put the cheese in. I've been shown a hundred times the right way to do it. You then seal it around the sides and then... Use the little wheel to use, cut it around. Use the around. little wheel. Cut round. Voila. And there we have it. And then it'll be chucked, thrown in to the oil to fry it. Whilst we wait for Matt's special shubarek <laughs> to come, we can actually drink. I don't know if drinking coffee this time in the afternoon is a good idea for us. We won't sleep tonight. No, no. no look at how cute these are. These are the cutest things ever. I absolutely adore the fact that you take the little cap off. I'm obviously gonna have to try it, but I feel like it's gonna literally blow my socks off. Oh my God, it's the strongest coffee I think I've ever tasted. But really, really nice. Cu carne, uno, cu carne, sau uh, do. Do. Our Shubarek has arrived. I'm not sure whether they've used my one because that looks, <laughs> that looks real good. Basically a fried pastry with cheese. Oh my God, that is hot. You can't go wrong. It's actually a little bit similar to a langosh, which I've tried before. It smells really good. Mmm. And it tastes really really good it's uh it's shaped a little bit like a pasty from back in the uk like a little pocket um you get them everywhere don't you, you get your samosas that are like a little pocket in india you get your pasties in the uk mm. it's really nice i love as well how they are done made to order so they're not just sat there all day long they come in you order it the ladies make it in front of you know it's fresh and they've also got on with meat so this is sort of like a lamb a minced lamb meat with like a mint mm. It's really good. I think I actually prefer that to the cheese. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It was what an incredible and unique day and experience we've had in Vlad's hometown of Mangalia. Um, that Shubarek was amazing here at Cafe Oriental. It was honestly so good. I've never tried Shubarek before, so I'm really, really pleased. Um, and to learn about the history of the oldest mosque in Romania and to see the traditions and the culture 
and the food from the Tartars, it was amazing. I am full, I am coffeeed up and it's been an amazing day. We will see you in the next one, here in Romania. Yeah, yeah.